Freedom, Madam Deputy Speaker, is not an absolute, but it should be regarded as precious. And it should be always the strongest possible presumption in its favour. If government is to take away fundamental liberties of the people whom we represent, they must demonstrate beyond question that they are acting in a way that is both proportionate and absolutely necessary. Today, Madam Deputy Speaker, I believe the government has failed to make that compelling case. Six weeks ago, many of us made the case that the curfew policy at 10pm was not just unnecessary, but that it was counterproductive. Today, the government apparently agrees that the 10pm curfew makes no sense. A month ago, the government insisted that golf and tennis and bowls and gyms were unsafe. Now, it seems that they are not. Mr. Madam Deputy Speaker, before the second lockdown, I invited the House to consider whether government had the right to make it illegal for people to see their children, their grandchildren or their elderly relatives, whether government had the right to ban collective worship or to take away the right to work to support your family. Different people, different members of this House, uh, will draw the line in different places. But we must all accept that these are fundamental freedoms of our constituents. And we should insist on compelling evidence before we allow them to be compromised. I looked in vain at the document published late yesterday for any explanation or any route being set out as to how we would reach that low uh, tier. There was no serious attempt in that document to provide an answer. In the absence of that serious and compelling case, Madam Deputy Speaker, I have no choice but to oppose these measures. For all Chingham and Sale West, that this debate is indeed about freedom, but it's also about the balance of risks. And